Operation Market Garden, with market being the airborne component, was an attempt to exploit Allied advances made in France after the Normandy and Southern France operations. By mid-September 1944, the German armies had been driven from most of France and Belgium. Sensing an opportunity to press what he thought were discouraged and disorganized German forces, Field Marshal Bernard Montgomery devised a bold plan to drive into Holland and cross the Rhine River at the town of Arnhem. The British 1st Airborne Division was tasked with taking and holding the bridge over the Rhine River while the American 101st and 82nd Airborne Divisions were assigned to bridges in and around the cities of Eindhoven and Nijmegen, respectively. Scheduled to occur over the 17th, 18th, and 19th of September, Market would be the largest airborne operation of the war. It would also be the first time that glider pilots were used as an organized infantry force in the war. In order for Market to succeed, all paratroop and glider forces had to be in their assigned areas at their given time without exception. As bridges were secured, the British 30 Corps would move north on a single lane road to reinforce the 1st Airborne at Arnhem. It was a bold plan with no contingency options. If any part of the plan failed, the entire operation would fail. From the beginning, problems developed. First, the Germans were exhibiting more resistance than expected. The airborne forces could hold ground already taken, but had difficulty advancing. The second problem was the weather. On the third day of the operation, bad weather prevented aircraft from taking off from England. Of particular concern to the 82nd Airborne, who were already facing challenges in the accomplishment of their mission, the inability of the 325th Glider Infantry Regiment to reinforce the division at Nijmegen was a serious setback. The objective of the 82nd was to take the Nijmegen Bridge, which was in German hands. The glider pilots who lifted the 82nd Airborne to Nijmegen on the 17th and 18th had assembled in an area where they intended to catch the resupply trucks going back to Belgium and from there onto their bases. The location was a hunting lodge north of the town of Mook called Jotslot Mookerheide. On the evening of the 19th, General James Gavin was told that he would not see the 325th GIR as expected. He was now short one entire regiment and had a bridge needing to be taken on schedule. General Gavin notified the glider pilots that they would be put on the line in place of the missing 325th Glider Infantry Regiment. On the evening of the 19th, those glider pilots from the 313th and the 61st Troop Carrier Groups occupied their positions alongside the 82nd Airborne. The 9th Troop Carrier patch shows clearly on this glider pilot's arm. We see on the hilt of the knife the name Redfern. This identifies the man in the photo as 2nd Lieutenant J. Redfern. This map, marked up by the 505th Parachute Infantry Regiment, shows glider pilot positions on the evening of the 21st of September. On the 20th of September, 150 glider pilots reinforced Company A, 1st Battalion, 505th Parachute Infantry Regiment, 82nd Airborne Division. On the 21st, 1st Battalion received 285 additional glider pilots and 100 were put in position as indicated. 50 more were in position by 0115 hours 
with 145 more held in reserve. By 0830 hours, all glider pilots were in position. The blue line represents the 300 glider pilots on the front line. In the 313th Troop Carrier Group history, Captain Eglin Andros reported, At 20 hundred hours, the group leader was alerted to assemble at the CP with the other group leaders. They were told at the time that they were the division reserves and that they were to take positions east of Mook on drop zone N with the 505th paratroopers. They assembled and hiked five miles to be in position by 0300 hours as an attack was expected in the area at dawn. Glider pilot Fred Lundy, who was assigned to the 49th Troop Carrier Squadron and who is currently an advisor to the Leon B. Spencer research team, said, Each night we could see nothing ahead of us due to a very thick and dense fog. It could be the reason the Germans did not attack. I remember one gun the Germans used to shoot screaming memes, which was a psychological weapon to instill fear and was not very accurate. They would shoot one and then move the gun before they would use it again. If they shot it twice in one place, we would be able to zero in on it and destroy it. On Friday night, September 22nd, from midnight until 9 o'clock, our sector received a continuous shelling by heavy mortar and 88 millimeter fire, which gave us the impression that a large attack would follow. It never came. On D plus 5, the 313th was relieved, and glider pilots of the 439th Troop Carrier Group replaced them in the foxholes. With the arrival of the 325th GIR on September 23rd, the infantry role of the glider pilots in the Nijmegen area came to an end. General Gavin's emergency use of glider pilots to reinforce his line caused him to reflect on the Army Air Force's single-use doctrine. In a letter to Major General Paul Williams, 9th Troop Carrier Command, he wrote, in looking back over the past week's operations, one of the outstanding things, in my opinion, and one thing in most urgent need of correction, is the method of handling our glider pilots. I do not believe there is anyone in the combat area more eager and anxious to do the correct thing, and yet so completely, individually and collectively, incapable of doing it, than our glider pilots. I feel very keenly that the glider pilot problem at the moment is one of our greatest unsolved problems. I believe now that they should be assigned to airborne units, take training with the units, and have a certain number of hours allocated periodically for flight training. Fortunately, the Army did not concur with all his conclusions, but had already determined that the role of the glider pilot, once they had delivered their load, needed to change. After the Holland operation, the 9th Troop Carrier Command made a fundamental change to their doctrine and decided that the glider pilots were to participate as infantry upon delivering their loads. This would be especially important to the planning of the next push to cross the Rhine River. On the 14th of November, 1944, the 9th Troop Carrier Command began sending troop carrier groups to Ogborn St. George to receive infantry training. The 17th Airborne Division, who were now in England, were tasked with the training responsibility. Operation Market Garden was not a success, but lessons learned would be applied to the next airborne operation, Varsity, with a favorable outcome. But that is a subject for another presentation. Postscript. In 1982, the Kingdom of the Netherlands were informed that the glider pilots were not part of the 82nd Infantry, who had, near the end of the war, received the highest award that the Netherlands may bestow, the Orange Lanyard. The Netherlands agreed that the glider pilots should also have received the award and has bestowed the Orange Lanyard on over 200 glider pilots. It has come to our attention that Flight Officer Fred Lundy had not yet received this award. 
He bravely fought alongside the 82nd in a foxhole for four days and was in a firefight when the Germans attacked his evacuation convoy. He bravely helped his superior officer, who was wounded in the face, getting him off the battlefield and to an aid station. Fred has asked to receive his award at our 50th annual reunion in Lubbock. He will turn 100 years old on September 8, 2022. We hope everyone will join us to honor Fred and all the other glider pilots who fought in the Netherlands.